What's going on everybody? My name is Ian and welcome to another IR Skulls video. Today I'm going to show you a little bend curve hack that might help you out if you're working with hair, pipes, or anything that you kind of need to bend in your sculpture. Let's do this. Okay everybody, so today's video is about the bend curve, not necessarily how to use it, but a little trick I picked up along the way with how to manipulate the bend curve to have our sculptures a little bit more um, non-destructive so to speak mainly when we're sculpting and we're trying to move hair or pipes or have anything that has a bend to it you would normally use bend curve to go ahead and actually bend that shape but with this trick i'm going to show you today you actually will come back to that uh, sub tool later and you'll be able to manipulate it on the fly whenever you need to so nothing is set permanent so to start this trick, we first need to use our curve brush to get the shapes that we want. So I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, grab the curve multi-tube brush. And if you want to follow along, I definitely encourage that. So hit B on your keyboard, hit C to populate all the curve brushes that are within ZBrush. And then we're going to go ahead and pick the curve multi-tube brush, which is five on the keyboard. Now what we're going to do is draw out a shape. And if you're new to curve brushes in general, then this red and black line is the path that the subtool is trying to take. And it's not set in stone right now. This is the curve brush's non-destructive method temporarily. And I'll get into why I say that the way I said that in a minute. Because right now what we could do is kind of grab the ends and tug and pull or grab the middle and start making these shapes. And this is non-destructive until we apply it. And all you have to do to apply it is either draw out a new shape or just touch the subtool in which you drew it out, and then it is it's destructive. You can't you can't manipulate the shape anymore without hitting the move brush and maybe tugging or pulling. So at this point, there's not much we can do. That's where bend curve comes in. So we're gonna go to our subtool and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna split unmasked so that we we have it in a separate subtool. And now we're gonna go ahead and open up our gizmo by hitting W on the keyboard. And we're gonna go ahead and reset this to the center of that subtool. And what I find is really useful, especially if you're new to bend curve, is that wherever the red arrow is facing, that is generally where the dots of the bend curve is gonna show. So we're gonna go ahead and move this over here so that it kind of follows this path a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit the gizmo which opens up options. And right here, we're gonna pick bend curve. And as you can see now, we have these dots. Now these dots allow us to move and uh, start manipulating our shape the way, the way we want. And if we click these, uh, this kind of yellowish gold cone and move it up and down, we can actually get more shapes providing uh, more and greater detail to that bend. But typically when you come up to the gizmo, if you hit accept, you're now set. It's now back to being destructive. I can't go back without hitting control Z and actually generating any more changes. I have to now go back into gizmo, open up a new bend curve, and this can actually become a problem. As you can see now, all the dots are not along the shape of the bend naturally. So the trick here is how you can populate multiple curve two brushes without ever having to accept this bend curve shape. So here's how you do it. So back in the gizmo, you have a couple options. You have bend curve, you have accept, reset, full reset, delete, and gizmo 3D. Here's the cool part. If you never hit accept and you just hit gizmo 3D, notice right here on this cog that I'm pointing to is still orange. That indicates that those points are still active. So I can go ahead, click that, go back to bend curve, and now I can move those shapes again. And once I'm happy with that, take the cogwheel, go back to the gizmo, move this around, rotate, go back, hit bend curve, those points are still there. One more little trick with this is if you're back in the gizmo and you hit control shift uh, D, that will generate a brand new subtool. And if I move those, over, over, let's say over here, like if this was hair or something. And now I'm like, yeah, let's put this right here. When I hit the uh, gizmo one more time, I go back to bend curve, these shapes are still here. So if you're trying to populate multiple tubes or hair locks or anything of the sort that you need to constantly bend, but you don't wanna redraw those shapes, this is a little trick that I've found that is 
very helpful and very time consuming. So again, if I were to hit Control Shift D and then go back to that gizmo, move that around, it makes a duplicate. I go ahead, go back to bend curve, and now I can keep manipulating those shapes and I can do that till my heart is content. Okay, everybody, that is it for today's trick or tip or hack or whatever we're calling it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification if you like more videos and you wanna be notified when they go. Also too, I have a live stream schedule, so check in the description down below for all that stuff. And again, I would love to hear back from you if this works for you in any way, shape or form. If you guys have any advice that you would like to actually add to this, please let me know. I always look forward to those. Anyway guys, that is it and I'll talk to you guys later.